You ever just want to quit your job, buy a boat, sail around the world? Well, what if we told you that was possible? I'm Rad. And I'm Sasha. With more willpower than money and a dream to become pirates, we bought a sinking sailboat and spent the next nine months transforming it into one of the sexiest boats on the seven seas. There is nothing that can get in the way of us sailing around the world. So grab your popcorn, hit subscribe, and be prepared for one hell of a story. The story of our lives. This is the journey of Spirit Animal. So we bailed the water out of the boat, found a ton of structural repairs along the grid and the keel on the inside of the boat. We power washed and cleaned it up, went to the Annapolis Boat Show and became friends with a ton of sailing channels. And on our way back, we had the same flight as someone we met. And it turns out he needed a place to stay in Fort Lauderdale for a few nights. As you know, I have ran into a zillion problems with this boat. I found patchwork all over the place. And who better to bring out to the boat than Colin from Parlay Revival, baby. <laughs> yes, boy. <laughs> this man is going to diagnose all my problems. Come on. You're like a walking Jesus of boats, I thought, dude. I thought we were just going out there for a party. Yo, we're gonna party. You're gonna diagnose my problems. Are you gonna tell me where I need to fiberglass, what the hell bulkheads I need to fix? It's gonna be easy. All you gotta do is say all of them. And then we're gonna slam some beers and watch the sunset. Let's go, want, baby. That's what the life jackets are for, okay? So this thing stinks, huh? Exactly. And our cooler. <laughs> Yes, this is the same Colin from episode two where I was 1,200 miles away in Panama looking for boats and I happened to stumble across his. This guy is the founding father of the Lagoon 450 bulkhead issues and brought awareness and led the charge on how to properly fix them. I can't think of a better person to bring out to a boat that has structural damage than him. Meanwhile, while me and Numbnuts are headed to go diagnose all of our problems, Sasha's having the time of her life in the Bahamas with our friends Nelly and Bannon. We are out of here by Ocean World. Captain Banner over here. Oh, yeah. Nelly. We've got some sporty waters coming ahead. Man, look at that ass on that thing. <laughs> Look at that sexy beast. Look at that sexy beast. Haven't been here in over a week since the Annapolis Boat Show. So, let's see what we got going on. Can't show you my code. <laughs> I don't remember my code. Thought that's what it was. What's the code? I'm trying to remember. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that's what it was. That's a big boat. Oh, I know what it is. Bingo. All right. One alarm, but that's not bad. Engine voltage warning. All right. Colin's getting down to business. He took off his shirt. So we're going to let him uh, let his brain do his magic and try to put our heads together and see if we can find what is actually wrong with this boat and what this boat has been through. <laughs> Working on uh, two cylinders at the moment. Cool. One in my brain, one in his. With V12s, so we're running on two. <laughs> yeah. How much did you pay for the boat? Buck 20. 120. What do you think it's worth? Uh, 80 grand. <laughs> <laughs> you got a good price? <laughs> yeah, solid deal. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta get your hands dirty when you make poor decisions. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is where I found the issue. Look in that crack. And now feel that. And it's all wet. See how it's got a little water around that? Is it coming through that patch or is it coming from above that? Looks like it's coming straight out the hole here, man. Right past that silly putty? <laughs> that Play-Doh stuff. They patched it with Play-Doh, man. And they 
it's done the repair down here as well. Yeah, exactly. There's all water back here. Just behind everything. Hold on, let's get out of here. Because I want to take you to the other side. See the crack in the back? Yeah. So, yeah. The crack in the glue. This is the same kind of shit that they use on my boat. This doesn't look like factory, this stuff. It's definitely not factory. I think this boat's taking a big knock back here, man. But to be honest, all of this tabbing that they've done here is sufficient. Looks like epoxy. That's good. If you grind it, you, there's a distinct smell difference between epoxy and polyester. That's good to know. But yeah, like this is all strong now. I want to see what's going on around that rudder. That's kind of scary what someone's done there. They just spared some shit over it. Hey, don't break my boat. <laughs> <laughs> They've tabbed all inside here as well. Great view. Something's happened back here. It looked like all the deck stayed together, but the framework came off the boat, off the hull. But what they've done here is fine. If I could get it just another half a foot, I'd be able to see the base of that rudder stop. How bad could it be? Can you see it? Oh yeah. <laughs> the uh, whole rudder shaft has been fiberglass back together, like repaired, so they hit hard. Oh shit. But looks like all the hard work's done. Let's paint this bitch and go. <laughs> <laughs> so you need to get access to that and uh, grind the shit out of it and do a proper repair if I was you. On the rudder? On the rudder. Really? You don't think that's sufficient? It looked like they built it up a lot. It, 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 it looks like water's coming in from the front side. Okay, now I'm having a better look now and it's... Doesn't that look like a lot of glass? Wow, there's glass all the way up the front, the, the back side of that wall there. You don't think you just send it in the boat as is? Keep an eye on it while you're sailing and just send, send it. I mean, people have done a circumnavigation in shittier boats than this, right? It's, it's not as bad as you think. That's good to hear. Can you repeat that? I said, this is f <laughs> so Tell me how to fix it. First thing you gotta do is get that water out, obviously. Yeah. Then make it bone dry. And then once it's bone dry, then you can start looking at where that water's coming from. You wanna do a bunch of troubleshooting while you're, while you're out in the water that water might be coming from somewhere else. Right now, with it all wet, it's hard to tell, but it does look like it's coming from the front side of that rudder. Like they've backed into something or ran aground or something, and this whole back side of the boat has taken a knock. So all that tabbing that's there, it's doing its job. It's pretty strong. So I wouldn't get too discouraged by all of that. That's the worst of it back here, right? That's the worst of it besides the keel patch. Glassing keels, something big I think this boat has been underwater. Every one of these was full of water, but you can see here how this whole thing has been patched. You can see the blue tape where they taped off. You can see how they patched over top of all this. Clearly this thing has smoked the bottom and I don't know if this is a good patch job or if it's something that I need to grind out and redo. Sailing Jesus, please tell me. This, I mean, it's just like this. It's definitely worth just grinding that back a little bit. Just to check. Just see if that's if it's all white and stuff, that's all delaminated. I mean it's so hard to tell because it's got a layer of gel coat over it. But you see how it's so lumpy and wavy, like you see this? That that's okay. Why would it be that lumpy if they're fiberglassing on a flat surface? Do you think they just built up a bunch of resin in that area and didn't yeah, so get when it they out? Glass, like, they would have put like one, two in there and then one, two there. And I mean, it looks strong. It looks like there's a decent amount of glass there. I wouldn't worry about the, the waviness of it. Usually with a patch, they over patch. So that's where I'm thinking it looks like shit, but it might be yeah, way I more think. strong than what you think. You're onto it. It looks like shit, but it might be fine. It might be super strong. There's nothing, there's nothing jumping out at me here, guys. It's, well, I'm a survey. No glass experience. That gives me hope. <laughs> All right, that includes the parlay inspection. He has given me. Includes. Includes? 
Did I say includes? Yeah. I, I meant concludes. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate you coming out, man. Time, brother. Seriously, dude. Thank you. Good luck. Yeah. Need it. <laughs> <laughs> Need it for sure. So the next day, we had a potential buyer for the catamaran. I'm currently on a sea trial selling the OG Spear Animal. And uh, I run into Hilton Amy, who have been buddy boating with me in the Bahamas, who are also on a survey and sea trial. And I'm also here with Colin and Zach, and they happen to know the guy on this yacht and the guy on that yacht. It's crazy how small of a world it is. So we headed to the haul out since this buyer was smart enough to get an inspection and we found some stuff wrong with the sail drives. So he was able to knock off an extra 10 grand off the price. We ended up getting almost what we asked for, but my mathematics were very far off. I was hoping to have 80 grand in my bank account after it was all said and done. But after the marina fees, broker fees, taxes, and all that BS, I only had 28 grand in a dinghy left. This was a pretty big punch to the stomach, because not only do I owe Steve 120 grand, I've got a boat that needs the same amount and work done. But the boat's gone and I finally have some money so we can start doing some projects. So there was only one marina that had availability, and the haul out date was set for 10 days from now. This gave us a little bit of time to tackle the transmission so we didn't have to limp to the haul out. Okay, we got Sasha back on the boat. She's already dirty. Already grease monkeyed up. So <clears throat> the transmission is slipping and it is not shifting into gear. So first thing we're gonna do is take the fluid out of the tranny and then wash it out with some fresh ATF and uh, make sure we have the right level of automatic transmission fluid in the reservoir. Yeah, it's too slipping. much or too little ATF will cause that, along with a few other things like worn out clutches and just nasty oil that can be making everything stick in there. So yeah, first step, drain it. That's what we're gonna do. So for the last two weeks, I've been wondering where my car keys were. Right where I put them. Oh, nice. That would be the battery alarm. All right. Our boat just likes to rub all the problems in our faces all day. Deal with it. So if you can see, that's where the dipstick goes. Making sure it goes in properly. And I'm just setting it in. Now, I'm gonna pull it out. Let's see what the level says. That is pretty high. It's like a full half an inch above. It. And that's why it's slipping. Yeah, hopefully. Which, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> That'd be the best diagnosis. Okay, well, let's take some out. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's pretty dirty. That's actually that's actually not clean at all. That is dirty. We pumped out all the transmission fluid. Then we checked all the linkage to make sure that the transmission was shifting into gear before our RPM. RPMs were going up. And then we put new fluid in it. The transmission. transmission was slipping and now it's done. It's done, it's done. Tried to run it. It's still slipping in first gear, so what we have to do now is take this transmission off and take it to a transmission shop to see if we can rebuild it. If not, it's gonna cost us $3,000 for a new transmission. We, got we are work to do. in over our eyelids in work and the crazy stuff starts now. So, let's get greasy. Let's get greasy. Let's get greasy. And this is why I really like Sasha. She is the greasiest, most barbaric, savage, badass chick I've ever met. And she's smoking hot. I mean, she is down for the get down. Have you ever seen another girl that wants to get elbow deep in grease and rebuild a transmission and then dive 60 feet, shoot a fish, and cook the best meal you've ever had in your life? I didn't think so. We call those unicorns or great white buffaloes two rare breeds that have only ever been seen or captured by a handful of people. They are exceptionally smart creatures that do not allow predators to get close unless they are stalked from the perfect distance for an unusually long period of time. You have to be stealthy and patient and wait for that opportune moment to pull the trigger. At first, Ralph seemed like the perfect guy to hang out with on a tropical island. 
but one you'd sail away from in about a week. <laughs> However, after hanging out with Roth for over a year now, I can truly say that he is unlike anyone I have ever met, and I find myself very attracted to him. At this point in my life, I love my sister and the channel that we built together, and I am truly grateful to the opportunity my parents gave us by letting us borrow their boat. But I'm 26, and it's time for me to spread my wings and take a leap of faith. And just like that, Sasha became my girlfriend. She was a part of this journey for the long haul. Now back to the transmission part. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is remove a transmission from our motor. Ours happens to be, to be behind the hot water heater and the exhaust and way back there. But what we're gonna do is take the all that stuff out. Better, wanna hand me a, a Phillips? Actually, I can reach it. Got it. Nice reach. Okay, so now I'm gonna get under here and undo this hose clamp. One, One bolt. bolt. <laughs> Holding it on. Let's see if you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> this might be entertaining. Nice. A little extra coolant is coming out, but it's okay because we're gonna suck that up with the oil extractor. Next thing we're gonna do is remove this exhaust manifold just so we can have even better access to the transmission. So Raf, you can see, is back there at the stern of the boat, and he's gonna give me, or pull the hose while I'm pushing it off. Got it? Almost. Yeah, got it. You're a beast. Got it. That is nasty in there. Nice. Working it. Okay. All right, exhaust elbow. It's just been taken out. And let's, let's take a look at our mixing elbow. It's not too bad. I've seen way worse. Well, I squeezed myself in the engine compartment in here so that I had a better. Uh, grip on this hose. We just pulled the hose off of the transmission. This is the cooling unit right here. So just pull that hose off and you can see there's a lot of calcium buildup in there, which is not good. And he's a barnacle buster. Oh, hear that crunch? That is a bit crunchy. Ooh, look at all that calcium in there. And now you can see the transmission is free to get pulled off. The engine by me. The engine by Raph. My mom always called me a little snake woman, but I'm not so sure about Raph. You better see the snake man. <laughs> we're, we're about to see Raph test his flexibility. Oh yeah. Gentlemen, six foot four, squeezing into a tiny engine compartment. Oh, something up my butt. Okay, we're in here. Now, it's a matter of how long can my knees be bent this like this for? Okay. Be bent this like this. <laughs> Gotta work on the trap game, man. Trap game is strong here, boy. Trap! <laughs> Got it. Two down. Two? Two down, you're baby. Make, you're making me look weak. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Last bolt out of the prop shaft that's connected to the transmission. And it easily, I barely slid it in that prop. Uh, the prop shaft just slid down. So we should be good. 
Okay, let's get this transmission off before the boat sinks and I go down with it. Another tight squeeze. How was it in there? It's awesome. I saw the underside of my balls. <laughs> uh. Yes! It's off. Success! Oh. Nice. Oh. Oh. Finally get your curls in today. Tomorrow we'll be taking it into the transmission shop. And like we said earlier, hopefully they'll give us a good diagnosis of a rebuild. Because the new one is going to be about three grand. So the transmission shop called and said it'd be $2,600 for the rebuild and they don't know if they can get it done before our haul out. Our haul out is in eight days and we don't really have any other option but to let them try and rebuild it. So we had eight days left until we had to make it to the boatyard and we decided to do a basic engine check. Changing out the belts, hoses, coolant, oil, and just general maintenance. But. As soon as we started digging into it, we realized that this engine has a ton of problems. There's green right there, indicating that there is a leak. This coolant is nasty and brown and disgusting. Right there, you can see corrosion and more green calcium build up around where salt water has been leaking through these gaskets. There you go. Ooh, that looks nasty. So, we, oh, look, they epoxied that. And you can just see pitting and all sorts of stuff. This engine's gonna need an entire rebuild. We have eight days until our haul out, and the clock starts now. <laughs> 